So how shocking is that? It's like a little mortifying, right? So what's crazy is a few decades ago, that would not have been abnormal at all. In fact, it would have been uh, not unexpected to see someone speaking in front of you smoking a cigarette. And so today I want to talk to you about why bottled water is the new cigarette and it's killing us slowly. Now, before I begin, let me iterate for everybody. My objective today is to shed light and knowledge and awareness around a problem that we have as well as a solution that exists today. It is not, it is not to vilify, condemn, critique single-use plastic water bottle consumers or cigarette smokers. Or if you're a real hellraiser, both. So my guess is that probably 90% of you in this room do one of those two things periodically. Now, what's interesting about cigarettes and bottled water is that there's a lot of parallels between the two. Decades ago, cigarette companies came up with a product that they sold on tastes and sex appeal and health. In fact, that's a real ad from decades ago that... Uh, suggests that more doctors smoke camels than any other <laughs> brand of cigarette. But what's funny about that, and also kind of amazing, is that when you look at bottled water advertising and how that has developed over a period of many years, it's much the same effect. Bottled water is being sold based on taste, health, it's sexy, but it's also really, really bad for the environment it's also really bad for our health and physiology. So the problem with single-use plastic water bottles, there's several, and I'm gonna walk through these for you. The first one is the amount of plastic destruction that is left in the wake in the form of bottles that are not recycled. In the United States, bottled water is a $20 billion a year industry, and we consume 50 billion single-use plastic water bottles every single year. And what's almost, almost equally as amazing as that is that 80% of them don't get recycled. So what's that mean? That means that 40 billion single-use plastic water bottles end up on our oceans, lakes, rivers, and landfills. Now, in addition to them ending in our environment, which I'm going to come back to in a minute, German researchers in 2013 did a takedown on what is actually in the water and the plastic bottles themselves that contain drinking water. And one of the things that they found was that these plastic water bottles tested in 2013 actually contain over 24,500 chemicals. That's more than three times the number of chemicals that are in cigarettes. And so now finally we're drinking the very plastic that we're putting into the environment and polluting. So a recent Orb Media study showed that 94% of tap water now contains microplastics. So why, how does this happen? Well, you start to add up worldwide the hundreds of billions of single-use plastic water bottles that end in oceans, lakes, rivers, and landfills. And then you factor in the fact that plastics don't biodegrade. How do they degrade? Photodegrade. What's that mean? It means one piece turns into two, turns into four, eight, 16, 32, until it comes down to microparticulate and nanoparticle size. And then what happens? Ends up getting into our ecosystem. And in the ecosystem, it becomes a part of the aquatic life, and then it eventually makes its way into drinking water. So that's one of the reasons why 94% uh, of tap water actually contains microplastics. Now, you might think, well, that's okay, because I drink bottled water. So I might be contaminating the environment, putting plastics in the environment, but I'm not actually drinking them. This same or media study showed that over 90% of plastic water bottles contain microplastics as well. So in addition to 24,500 chemicals that exist in single-use plastic water bottles, it all, over 90% contain microparticulate, and those microplastics actually tested out to be higher than in tap water, to the point that there are over 314 pieces of microplastics per liter 
a bottle of water. It's staggering. And it's even in our air. So what's incredible to me about this is as I'm preparing for this presentation, every day there's a new headline about the amount of microplastics that are not only in our water, but at this point now in our air. And this is a study sample that was done from a remote region in France in the Pyrenees Mountains. So I hope you're wondering at least at this point, okay, rats, if bottled water is so bad and it's, it's, it's terrible for the environment and it's bad for our health, our health and it's health, it's, it's hellish too, but for our health, why do so many people consume it? Why is it such a big consumptive product? Well, the fundamental reason is that consumers don't like and they don't trust the tap. Okay, and I'm going to give a little bit of context to this. So, in 1974, next slide, there's this thing that was enacted called the Safe Drinking Water Act. This was an important piece of legislation. It's what helped form governmental policy around what is safe to, to what are a safe, allowable um, number of contaminants that can enter our drinking water system. Now, what's problematic about this 1974 Safe Drinking Water Act is that it has not been radically updated in the last 45 years. And in fact, today, there are over 60,000 known chemicals in use in the United States. Yet only 100 of those 60,000 chemicals are covered in the Safe Drinking Water Act. And in fact, the last time that that was amended as it relates to the chemicals was the year 1996. So we live in a country where we've made a fundamental decision that chemicals are safe unless they're proven to be bad. And that has devastating consequences and repercussions to the waterways. Next slide. So imagine it's 2009, or imagine it's 2019, but this is an image from 2009. And you're driving a car, and that car that you're driving today has the exact same basis for its safety regulations as was developed 30, 40, 50 years ago. No analog braking system, no electronic stability control, no airbags, certainly no driving and texting laws, given that mobile phones didn't even exist many decades ago. And that's part of the fundamental problem that we have in the United States today, is that we are driving a vehicle called tap water that has been regulated based on standards that were widely developed decades ago and have been um, not yet radically changed to be current. Next slide. So why don't we go back to the tap? There's three fundamental reasons why. First one is knowledge. <clears throat> uh, knowledge really is a lot like cigarettes, right? When you think about why do people smoke in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, a lot of people just didn't realize what are the devastating effects to tobacco usage over a long period of time. As I said before, there's over 7,000 known chemicals in cigarettes. In plastic water bottles, there's over 24,500 known chemicals, and this ends up being a carrier. Next slide. Second one is taste. So chlorine is a really essential part of our tap water supply. Why is that? Well, it safely delivers the water to us in a disinfected state that makes its way from the municipal waterways and the municipal water plant into our homes. There's a big problem with chlorine though, and that's the taste of it. People do not like the taste of chlorinated water. And furthermore, chlorine ends up being um, toxic to intestinal flora. So the very good bacteria that are in your stomach often get decimated over time with the addition of chlorine. And finally, this last one is trust. Now, you probably thought that I was gonna lead with lead. And I will mention lead quickly, next slide please, because 63% of Americans are greatly concerned about the quality of their tap water. And it's hard not to talk about lead, next slide. Because in the United States, there are only 15 states, for example, that require mandatory lead level testings in its public schools. That's not just sad. That is a fucking tragedy. And that's something that we need to change. Next slide. There's something else. Glyphosate, which is weed killer on tap. So in 2015, the World Health Organization actually finally recognized that glyphosate 
is probably carcinogenic to humans. What is glyphosate? It's a chemical that is most commonly known as an ingredient uh, in the branded herbicide called Roundup. And ironically enough, the very first commercial usage of glyphosate was in 1974, the same year that the safe, uh, 1974 Safe Drinking Water Act was enacted. Next slide. Uh, as part of this, there's a lot of data that suggests out there that there's a positive correlation between an increase in disease and our increased glyphosate usage across the United States. Next slide. So all this sounds really um, pretty tragic and pretty terrible, both from a tap water perspective as well as a bottled water perspective. But there is some light and there's some hope and there's some potential, but it requires us to take action. Next slide. There's four steps to a solution. Number one, ban. Number two, legislate. Number three, tax. And number four, purify. If we do these four things, we can radically change the way that we consume water. We can radically improve the tap water in the United States. And we can also radically reduce single-use plastic water bottle waste. Let's go through these real quickly. Number one, ban. We need to ban herbicidal contaminants that are decimating our soil. Literally today, we are drinking tap water that has had decades worth of herbicides, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, and other agricultural products that are dripping through the waterways, and we are literally in the process of creating a, a toxic cocktail by which we're drinking through our tap water lines. That needs to stop, and the way that we stop it is by banning herbicidal products that contaminate the soils, that has all sorts of chemicals in it that are ultimately pollutants into our waterways. Number two, we need to radically update the 1974 Safe Drinking Water Act. And then we need to apply those resources to water infrastructure and improve them so that we can deliver higher quality tap water to Americans throughout the United States. Number three, tax. Not normally in favor of increasing taxes. However, something interesting happened when we started taxing uh, cigarettes. So if we were to look at an adjusted average of cigarette taxes across all the states and do a blend of that across all 50 states, you'd come up with a tax rate that's around 44.3%. What does that tax money do? It goes back to actually funding anti-smoking campaigns and also some of the treatments as it relates to it and, and also alternative therapy, for example. That's the exact similar line of thinking that we should be applying to, to uh, bottled water products. If we were to take a similar tax basis as is applied to cigarettes and apply that to bottled water, we would generate over $8 billion a year in revenue that could be used not only to clean up the single-use plastics that we're wasting into the environment, but also by improving our waterways and testing and the legislation that's required to support this strategy. Next slide. And finally, purify. So with today's technology, you can actually take the water that's being delivered to your tap and improve it dramatically by adding filtration and purification technology onto it. And not only is this important as a means by reducing our consumption and our, our usage of single-use plastic water bottles, but it's also important for us to do as a means and by way of improving the quality of the water that we're ingesting that's free of microplastics, chlorine, pharmaceuticals, herbicides, pesticides, and related. Finally, what can you do individually? It requires us to take action. This is a problem that can and must be solved. But in order to solve it, it requires that we do something. And it requires that we do something together. Number one, make a conscious effort. Just be mindful about the ways that you can start to change your behavior from single-use plastic water bottles to something else that comes out of the tap. And that mindfulness over time will change the course of time so that we end up on the right side of history. Number two, contact legislators and vote accordingly. These laws that we're talking about are the fundamental basis of the safety and the safe provision of tap water, not only to all the men and the women that are in this room, but also our children. And that is a fundamental responsibility that all of us have. Number three, use your voice 
to drive the change that you want. And probably one of the most powerful ways that you can do that is with your pocketbook. So support businesses that provide alternatives to single-use plastic water bottles and that do provide filtered or purified water on tap or alternatives to plastic. And then finally, number four, sign up for our pledge on crushplastic.com, which we'll, we will use as a way to advocate and deliver a pathway for change in the way that we consume and drink water across the United States. And in the process of that, I hope that we can accomplish the vision and the mission of ending single-use plastic water bottle waste. Thank you.